Both teams missed the playoffs and are looking to turn things around this season. Both have had some off the field distractions. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about what's going to happen tonight at MT Bank Stadium. What do you expect, Jabari? Man, I expect the Ravens to come out ready to play. Adversity is a tremendous motivator yeah. in the NFL. You know, when um, when they go through things like this, you know, teams band together. And MT Bank is a tremendous place to play. The crowd there is ready to get back to some football. You know, I think that anything that happens off the field, as soon as you come on the field and start playing football, it's a great equalizer. So even though it was, it was it was horrible what happened. I know that these fans are ready to go out there and cheer and get back to some football. So you got to think about it. You know, Baltimore Ravens, those guys, are st uh, they still have Torrey Smith, Joe Flacco, um, Steven Smith. Steve Smith is playing like a, a beast. He's still jumping over people and stiff arming DBs. Beautiful name. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> name. Best name in football. I like, right. I like the, the Baltimore Ravens yeah. tonight. And this is a big-time rivalry game. So we're going to see some good football tonight. You like the Ravens in the game? I do like really? the Ravens in the game. Even though they're going through some adversity right now mm -hmm. and, and the backfield is going to be switched up, I like young man Justin Forsett. He's been a journeyman for the last five years. He's been on five different teams, yeah. excuse me, in seven years. Yeah. And this guy has just been plugging away. He's great in space. He's uh, he can take it up the middle. I'll just just watch watch what I say. Watch tonight. Justin Forsett is gonna have a big game. All right, Stephen A. What do you expect tonight? Oh, I expect the Ravens to beat the Steelers tonight because I don't like what I saw from the Steelers once they uh, had a 24-point lead and let the Cleveland Browns erase it and almost win that football game. And to go into Baltimore with the emotions running high, with Peter back in the lineup with Flacco, having Steve Smith still capable of playing the way that he's playing with, with Torrey Smith and Jacoby Jones and those boys, I just think that it's one of those situations where the defense will be inspired. The Steelers won't be able to run the ball nearly as effectively as they were able to do at least at some increments against Cleveland. And I don't think that they're going to be spotted 24 points. I think on a night like tonight, it just appears to be destiny uh, uh, pushing the Ravens yeah. forward. Remember, a team that starts 0-2, only 12% of them have made the postseason. So it's something that the Baltimore Ravens recognize they can ill afford to do to fall into that kind of hole, particularly within the AFC North Division. Big Ben Roethlisberger is going to have a good year. We don't know what is going to happen with Le'Veon Bell and LeGarrette Blunt and those boys. But in the end, I just think a night like tonight is ultimately going to work against uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, not for them. Uh, I, de I definitely think that they'll split this year, but because this game is in Baltimore, I think that'll help Baltimore get the edge and they'll win this game. I agree with what both of you said, but not nearly as strong, strongly as you made the case, especially you, Jabari. You said that adversity is, can be a great motivator. It can also be a great distraction. How many teams, how many times have we seen after a game that a team said, our heads just weren't in this game because we had so much going on this week. Now, will it unify or will it split this team because its minds are elsewhere? If, if one team can get its attention, it would be the Pittsburgh Steelers because of this great rivalry. So now we're back to let's just do the pure football. Which team is better? The Ravens are a little better than the Steelers to me. And yet the Steelers looked dominant in the first half against the Browns, up 27 to 3. And then you want to talk about falling apart and going Jekyll Hyde? The, the Pittsburgh Steelers at home gave up 288 yards in the second half. That They turned Brian Hoyer into Peyton Manning because he, he did look like he goes 15 to 20 for 173 in the second half with a touchdown and no interceptions. Pittsburgh Steelers in the second half gave up 121 yards rushing. So even though I'm not sure the Ravens' hearts are completely in this game, I just think they're, they're a whole level better than the Steelers are right now. And I think on defense, they're much better than the Steelers are. My, my only issue with your prediction was you, you had the audacity to, to include Joe Flacco's name as a strength of the Ravens, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. You threw it in there just like on the fly. And I'm thinking that's a plus or a minus yeah. because to me, again, I'm rooting for them because I picked them to, to win a wild card. But in their game against Cincinnati, when push came to shove at the end of the game, when they had a chance, they were up 16-15 early in the fourth quarter, and then they lost 23-16, to as you know. But Flacco wasn't very good at the end of that game. So do you really trust Joe Flacco? Oh, I do. 
I, I, I do. You know, I don't know him personally, but I've played against him, and in my experience, this guy throws a touch. He has a touch on a deep ball that's one of the best in the league. It is. Um, and with, you have to keep in mind, they have John Harbaugh. This guy is a good, good coach. He knows how to put people in position to win. He's a Super Bowl winning coach, and obviously they are going to put themselves, he's going to put themselves in a position to be successful. Now, to your other point when you were saying that adversity, you don't believe adversity is it, a good motivator. It, I, it can be a distraction. It, it, it can be a distraction, but being a, a player, having the adversity that we had with, um, with, with the bounty issue, yeah. sure. knowing that we were only playing for each other um, when nobody else believed in us we buckled down and there's a lot of games in which we just willed our way through so i understand that adver adversity can be a distraction in some sense but i believe the leadership is there for the baltimore ravens who are not to be once you get into white lines that's a great equalizer okay that's going to be the, tonight. the year after bounty gate then it took its toll right? it took its toll yeah. because we had i mean obviously our leadership you were was gone, gone. Yeah. Okay. their leadership is in place it is what leadership is left after? What leadership Ray, is left? You know, yes, right, yes. Okay. But and Ed, Ed but but Daryl Smith, no Daryl Smith is a he's a good leader himself. Um, and I know yeah. that they have they have guys in place on the offensive uh, side of the ball that's going to uh, step up and, and and take that role. Okay, I'm going to go close, high scoring tonight. Is I'm going to go up to third. I'm going to say Ravens 30, Pittsburgh. When does that ever happen in this type of game? They, they do. They score points. <laughs> this is a. They go up and down. Yeah. This is a hard nosed game. I say 17 to 14. Really? Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Yes. I agree with that. I agree with that. I think it's going to be somewhere along the line. Skip a 2017.